really and truly speaking. It's only the love of God in the heart of man that can sustain you. You know, we always say here that Christianity is not about our promises and our vows to God, but it's about His promises to us. Until that really shifts in your Christian life, you will struggle, always trying to make God happy, always trying to please a seemingly angry God. And there are many people that want you to please them, you know, add God to that list. So you are living your life trying to please so many people, including God, with all these standards, over 600 laws in the Old Testament. That body is enough for anybody not to be happy. And that's what religion does. So Christianity, we say Christi we don't read the Bible to know or to get a direction on how to behave. We read the Bible to get a direction on what to believe. Because in our believing, we are empowered to think properly, which eventually will shape our behaviors and our decision-making process. And at the heart of it all, the message of grace is what marinates the believer's heart. He said, Christianity is not about living for God, but about living from God. If you make your Christianity based on how you can live for God and live for God, you become frustrated. Because true rest is living from God, not just living for God. By the time we begin to live from God, the resultant is to live for God. And today is the believer's meeting. We want to, yeah, glory, you can praise God. We want to show the more you see who you are, we've been doing it, we've been on the topic about the spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare. The more you begin to see who you are, major, the major we said that we are not in the battle with Satan. We are in a battle with the thoughts and belief systems that Satan is sponsoring. Spiritual warfare is an identity warfare because true liberation will come in the knowledge of who we are. The fundamentals of negative behavior that we call spiritual attack, all those things, is a lack of understanding our identity in Christ. And that's why the message of the gospel shows us Christ. And in Christ, we find out who we are. The revelation of the Christ is the unveiling of the identity of the believer. You get it? The more you see Jesus, the more you know you. The more you know you, the more the devil can play with you. Yes, this evening is like evening, maybe we are eating. So, and the fundamentals of the knowledge of our identity and who we are is critical in the, in that the basis of self-esteem. If you build your self-esteem around money, it can disappoint you. The fundamentals of our self-esteem must come from the validation of the Father's love. You didn't hear what I said. And this, this evening, are you in church? Yes, sir. Because there are issues that will happen in life. If you are not careful, you ask yourself, many questions. And at the core, one of the things to know and one of the things that will help you through any life challenge is the understanding of 
the Father's love. So, the gospel, therefore, is the revelation of the Father's love to his family. Are you hearing? The gospel, the Bible is not a book of rules to keep. The Bible is the revelation of the Father's love as seen in Christ. The fatherhood of God as revealed in Christ. And it's towards an end that you will see yourself in him and you will see your seat at the Father's table. That in itself is what is the true deliverance. No matter how many oil is poured on you, how many times you go for deliverance meetings, until you know who you are, you will still be tormented in your mind. And we, we talked about that the last time, but I don't want to go there. I want to build something quickly before we get into the second phase of this service. James 1 or Hebrews 13 verse 8 first. Hebrews 13 verse 8. TPT. Hebrews 13 verse 8. TPT. You know, the message of his grace is not a new concept. The message of the New Testament is not one of the messages of the church. The message of the grace of God, which is God's riches at Christ's expense, the message of grace is that you are saved, and once you are saved, you are saved forever. The message of grace is that it is not by works, it is a gift. The message of grace is not a new concept we brought into the church. The message of grace is the message of your faith. When the Bible says they were obedient to the faith, they were obedient to a message. When Paul said, I have kept the faith, it's not that I was emotional and I was keeping the faith. I will not doubt, though I will not doubt. To keep the faith is to keep the message that God's riches at Christ's expense. The message of substitutional sacrifice. That means he died so I can live. He was bruised so I can be forgiven. If you are hearing, shout I hear. So the message of grace is the message of the Bible. It's not a new message. It's not a new concept. And the, every believer is designed to live from that place. When the Bible, and I was teaching in Ammoni Prayers, when the Bible says Christ is the wisdom and the power of God, what it's explaining to us is the only time you can live effectively as a human being is to live from Christ. It is wise to rest in Christ. That's why so wisdom is resting in Christ. If you do any other thing, you will damage yourself. So why Christ is the wisdom of God, it means that the only way a believer or a human being is to live effectively on the earth is to live resting in our Sabbath. That's the only way. So that's why it's the wisdom of God. That's the best thing for your life. You can't live based on resting on. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with your own heart. Lean not on your own understanding. So to lean on Christ is the wisdom of God. That is how you, you can't live anywhere, any other way. To live any other way is not wise. That's why Christ is the wisdom and the power of God. Because from the beginning, when God created everything, the fish came out from his own environment. That's why we say Christianity is not living for God, it's living from God. So, man is supposed to live out of God, he's supposed to live from God. Man's environment is to live from God. And that's why we said we have been teaching here that spiritual warfare is not about prayer, certain prayer. The Ephesians 6, when he's talking about the weapons of, I'm talking about the whole arm of God. 
is talking about the belief systems that the gospel supplies. There are certain belief systems that the gospel supplies to you. Those belief systems is what we call the armor of God. The branch of truth, the breastplate of his righteousness, not yours. Those are the belief systems that guard your heart from the strategies of the enemy. So we now say that most of the time, what the enemy does in 2 Corinthians 4, for whom the God of this world has blinded. So, why is he blinding? He's blinding because he knows, like I may have shared here, the enemy is not blinding you from knowing the many laws of Moses, the anointing of Elijah. The enemy wants you to see all that one. You can see it. Fact. Have your way with it. <laughs> but your identity in Christ, the gospel, whom the God of this world had blinded their mind, let the light of the glorious gospel to shine in their who is the image of God. So the enemy's paramount strategy is to distort the character of God. Because in distortion of the character of God, you will never see who you are. And you'll be blaming God for what the enemy is doing. That's why for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. The manifest we have said here is not that he manifested and fell people down. The manifestation is the revealing. For this purpose was the Son of God is showing himself that he is good all the time. He is light and he is absolutely good. So when he manifested by showing himself, we now knew who God is like and what God is not like. So by the revelation of Jesus, we destroy the works of Satan. Because the works of Satan from the beginning was to destroy God's character. That's why the Bible says he was the murderer from the beginning. So, I don't have power. Therefore, I don't have power. But what I'll do is to blind you from the one that has power. So, I don't want you to ever see the gospel. I don't want you to ever see who you are. I don't, I don't want you to ever know that you are forgiven past, present, and future. I don't want you to ever know that heaven is not at last, heaven is at first. I don't want you to ever know that my love for you is unconditional. I don't want them to ever know that the love God has for them is unconditional. Because in their ignorance is the strength of my manipulation. Obviously, we know John 5 45, Jesus is speaking. Put it up, John 5 45. John 5 45. Do not think that I will accuse you before to the Father. Now, this is Jesus speaking. So, if he says, Do not think, that means you can think. You may be thinking. And somebody may be here who is thinking that Jesus may be accusing you before the Father, or he's paying for your sins instrumentally. <laughs> <laughs> Ever live to make intercession for you. And the wrong interpretation of that scripture is that Jesus is begging you know, instrumentally. <laughs> so when you sing, he goes and says, Father, they've done it again. How far? This one can even fly off. <laughs> but you need to read your Bible contextually. The ever living there, it means that if he cannot, the other priesthood in the Old Testament was temporary because the life of those human beings, would, they would die. It was a temporary life. Now, because this our own priest can never die, his intercession can never stop. So, it's not like he's the ever living is that his life is the intercession. As long as he's alive, we are interceded for. Mm. 
So that's what he was saying because he was comparing the different kinds of priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood without beginning of days and end of days. So there is no time where there is someone who died and we have to find a priest quickly to, to help the situation and find blood. No, this one is eternal. And that's the assurance that religion and devil doesn't want the believer to have. Because when you have that assurance, you will go for the business meeting with that assurance. When you have that assurance, you will smile for Jesus with that assurance. When you have that assurance, you will give glory to God with that assurance. Praise God! You can welcome our guest speaker for today. <laughs> So, feeding on God's word is not an option for the believer. The Bible says, as newborn babes endlessly desire the sincere milk of the world. That's not for first timers. So, only first timers are the newborn babes. No. What is telling every believer that every day as a believer, you must look at the word of God as a newborn baby, you must have that excitement and expectation. It's not for all new first timers only. As a newborn baby, you should look at the milk of the world from the perspective a newborn baby is ready to latch. You are ready, you are, you are expectant at all times. The Bible talks about we look into the perfecting law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty. The perfect there obviously is there's nothing like sinless perfection. Nobody has it. You will never have it. So forget about thinking of having it. It's the maturity of the saints. The perfection of the saints is the maturing of the saints. And in the maturity of the saints is the manifestation of the liberty of the saints. The more the saints are mature, the more they enjoy the benefits of redemption. So, growth as a believer is the best thing you can do for yourself. If you don't grow and you don't mature in Christ, you are heaven bound But the ongoing work of salvation, we are God's workmanship. We created in Christ Jesus. You are God's idea. You are not saved by works, but you are saved unto good works. And in the renewing of your mind, is the, the good works is manifested. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can't see my time. So, show me where we are. But I want to just close with Acts 20 verse 32 in TPT. Acts 20 verse 32 in TPT. KJV says, I commend unto you to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you. The building of the believer is not in any word. Is in the word of his grace. Not every word preached will build you. Only the word of his grace builds. And the big believer is the believer that can go through storms and trials. So that's why we are not afraid of trials and temptations like James when we count it all joy. Why? Because they only speed up our maturity. And so now I trust you into God's hands and the message of His grace. And I've explained to, to us that the message of His grace is not different from God's hand. To be entrusted, really, if pastors want to entrust you into God's hand, they have to entrust you by teaching you the message of His grace. Because in the message of His grace, you are properly in God's hand. 
Not in pastor's hand. Not in Geo's hand. The message of his grace is what will make you a Christian in Nigeria, America, Canada, all the Japan places. Because that's the message of the gospel. And that's the eternal truth of the gospel. Yeah.